has come once again, although with the lockdown, many of us didn't even realize it was Friday this morning. It's like it's just another day where we must remain trapped in our homes. Our prime minister has been infected, but that's not why we're here. We're here to provide a little bit of levity to the horrors going on around the world right now. We're going to put our feet up. We're going to have some fun. We're going to chill out. We're going to be good. We're going to be all nice people. Big announcement for this week, as you can see down below the stream on the announcement box, is, of course, PreachCon 2020 is cancelled. It is official. I had to make the decision. It is done. It is cancelled at the moment. Nothing we can do about it. Wah, wah, wah. Big sad on that one. Big sad. I know many people were holding out that something would change, something would happen. But it's not. In fact, more and more things are getting cancelled. That is the way it is going. So rather than lead anybody on, booking time off if possible, or they still have jobs, is that no, we will not be having PreachCon this year. It's the only decision we could make. They're cancelling the Olympics. They're cancelling PreachCon, right? <laughs> Come on. Let's be real. Let's be real for five minutes. Let's be real for five minutes. It is the nature of the beast. Big sad, uh, but 2021, which will be the one. And who knows? Maybe by Christmas we can put something together near the Christmas period. Who knows what we can get sorted out as things start getting back to normal. At some point... That would be very, very nice. It has been a hell of a day. We have been balls deep in Pokemon and Doom and all kinds of things this week. Ripping and tearing, catching and missing over and over again. Absolutely ridiculously good streams this week. So, so many of you here doing our best to help the time pass while you're all trapped in your houses. So we probably will have some streams over the weekend as well. But I do need to throw some time at YouTube. YouTube's been a bit quiet as the streaming focus has been this week. But we will get that sorted. Let's have drama time. So I've got two stories for you today. You might say two stories. That's not a lot. Trust me. We are going on a journey. A journey that is going to upset you, rile you up, make you angry. And by the end of it, I almost guarantee you're not sure who is actually at fault. As is the nature of the best drama. Who is actually at fault here? Who is actually at fault right who is actually at fault not easy sometimes the best dramas are when you have two people or three people or four people who all believe they are right and all have a point that's the tricky stuff but before that let's have some role play that sounds good to me that sounds good to me uh we're gonna need one person here temporarily so these this name will also feature um we'll have holly we'll also feature in the next story because they're only briefly mentioned here uh, but when we got some uh, weird RP, let's do it. Uh, <laughs> let's do it. All right, RP and misery. And misery. Mm. RP has always been an interesting thing to me. It's something I have tried. I couldn't get into it. It wasn't for me. But for the people who are into it, they're very into it. And they have lots and lots and lots and lots of fun. Uh, RP sand. RP sand. It's look, I've been streaming for like what nine hours now. Give me a break. <laughs> Give me a break. I've got to make some mistakes. I'm a tired boy. I'm a tired boy. I've just had breakfast. <laughs> We're good. We're good. All right then. <clears throat> Sir Preach. Hello. And the viewers of Drama Time. Hello to you. I bid you greetings from the hidden lands of Slovenia. And I hope you're dealing with the pandemic the best you can. Doing what we can by not going outside. Indeed. I've been binging. Oh, pay attention on Patreon. Emma's doing a what's going on in isolation video. She's been filming it herself. Should be interesting. Should be interesting. I know many of you are asking what is all the crap Emma's been doing. She's doing a video for Patreon because it's not really a main channel thing. Uh, have you been binging? Uh, I've been binging drama time while playing different games. I felt inspired to share with you my story. It will combine roleplay, World of Warcraft, and my aspirations. Okay. In the days of my youth playing WoW, I had a really fun time. I did not really progress much in terms of raiding or PvP, but I enjoyed raiding and uh, I enjoyed playing with my parents when we would do dungeons together as a family. I was grinding reputations for different things, all the while making my different characters, leveling them to 40 or so, and then starting a brand new one. And it was at this time that I found out that we were all playing on a role-playing server. Up until now, I thought I had just run into some very strange people, but my parents explained to me that these people were trying to role-play with me. So I decided to see what it's all about. Right, first of all, why are you putting your kids on a roleplay realm? You know what happens there. 
I'm not saying it's the only thing that happens. I'm not even saying it's the majority of things that happens there. But you know who hangs out there. You know the kind of people are on those servers. There is definitely a higher percentage of those kind of people on those servers than there are on other servers. I mean, statistically, that has to be true, right? I would just imagine that is the situation. So there you go. Never, well, nevertheless, here we go. I had never really delved into roleplay before. Didn't really understand it. But I decided to give it a go. I was open to new experiences. I bet you were. I made myself, of course, a night elf rogue. And I was off to search for role players. Uh, we need a role playing guild. If uh, my audience would like to choose the name of my role playing guild. In my search, I encountered some kind of guild. I can't really remember the full name of it, so we will call it. <sighs> Come on a chest. Come on a chest. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful. How that is not dead yet actually blows my mind. I believe it was a dark, criminal-themed mercenary guild. Come on a chest does not seem particularly... (laughs) We're not calling it the tiny hippos. (laughs) Where people seemed nice and fun. I can't say much for the guild leader, though. She gave me kind of a short-handed interview. I was quite blunt. I did think, even at my tender age, that she was kind of a bitch. But onwards we go. For a while, things seemed to be going well in my little guild. I was coming up with my character on the fly. His hopes, his dreams, the personality, all of it I made as I played when people asked me about it. This seemed to cause some people some frustration. This is not how it was to be done. Then one night, Holly, my guild leader, pipes up in guild chat. Help! Help! I'm imprisoned! The guild must save me! And then she said, Those who come to free her will be well rewarded. Oh god, no. I'm out. <laughs> Gee, quit. <laughs> I think to myself, Oh boy! Oh boy! This is a great opportunity to make a name for myself. Maybe even make myself valuable and important to the guild. So I check where she is. Duskwood. I arrive at the place. It was the abandoned watchtower in Duskwood near the border to Deadwind Pass. It was quite scary there. So I knew things were about to get real. (laughs) I came to the tower. Announced myself. And a dark, gloomy figure appears to address me. Address me. A few moments after, some guy emotes that he knocks me out. He doesn't leave an opening for me to defend myself or whatever. Just that a rogue on stealths says clobbers me over the head and knocks me out. Now I think to myself, that's fair. He stealthed up behind me. I didn't see him, so he definitely got the advantage to get the knockout. But now, as a seasoned role player, as a man who knows his role play, a mere 23 years old at this point, I now know this is RPBS. The manners of battle in the role play world, sirs, dictate... I should at least be given the chance to defend myself. I, of course, am a rogue as well. I could have slipped into the shadows, used my night elf agility, some way of dodging him. But I was still a youngin. Regardless. Regardless. I got dragged into the tower. There I saw what could be described as a mishmash of characters that was supposed to be diverse but ended up looking so diverse that it made the whole thing look ridiculous we had a dk looking supremely dark and edgy we had a rogue wearing as dark a leather as he could we had two night elves that wore the most normal looking civilian clothes imaginable and a druid dancing in bear form and there right in the middle the damsel in distress 
Holly, my guild leader. The lady that my night elf wanted to rescue in order to get my foothold in the guild. She looked perfectly fine. She was just standing there, chatting away with the druid. They didn't even notice I had entered the room in order to do her rescue. I was tossed to the side. While I was ignored for five minutes, a night elf woman emoted, It's time to have fun with me. Now. Does it get more cringy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. I know what you guys are thinking. And our author knows what you're thinking as well. You're thinking this is going to be that kind of fun. It's not going to be that kind of fun. Is this going to be some kind of kinky shit we're about to get into? No, it's not. It's not at all. They decided to torture me. <laughs> mutilated my character. Anytime I tried to put up some resistance... It was met with out of character whispers saying, you can't do that. We're not ghosts, bro. And you are strapped down. So my character was stuck. Why aren't they torturing the woman they supposedly kidnapped? I thought to myself as I just AFK'd from my keyboard watching my character have his eye, ear and leg removed and eventually his penis. By the by, I got a little bored. And I asked the guild chat, is anyone else coming to this thing? <laughs> no answer. I whispered Holly. Is there a way out that I'm not seeing? She didn't reply. Now, here's the worst thing. It was starting to get late, and it's a school night. Bastard. My parents shouted up that it was time for bed. As someone who was raised to be a proper gentleman and not wanting to make a fuss, I asked out of character, is it okay if I leave now? <laughs> no one responded to my request. I watched the clock. Ten minutes passed. Within this point, five visits from my parents shouting at me to go to bed as I told them just one more minute while I finished this. All the while this is going on, these characters are just emoting over me that they're cutting up my little rogue. Finally, I was whispered by the DK. Do you really need to go right now? Question mark. In caps, yes! Yes! We'll be finished soon, he replied. <laughs> Five more minutes of talking over each other, being all grim and moody. I was allowed to leave. Now, I know what you're thinking. In retrospect, I could have just hearthstoned. Or just logged out. <laughs> I could have shown them to be disrespectful, ignoring douchebags. But I didn't. I stuck to the theme of the event that I had decided to join. See? Standing up for his honour. Come on a chest. I went to bed, went to school, and came back to find myself guildless. I was flabbergasted. I waited for Holly to log in and explain. When she did, I whispered her, Why am I guildless? She went on the biggest rant at me. You are very unprofessional. You caused a lot of problems that she had to deal with. I should not be leaving at inappropriate times during guild events. I wanted to ask her why there was not one other person from the guild that had bothered to come. I now know that they knew her events were kind of weird. Or why she ignored me asking, why are we here? Why is no one doing anything to her? Why am I being tortured yet she's fine? But she put me on ignore. I couldn't get a word in. So, revenge then. I decided to do what any young teenager would do. I was going to attack her. In roleplay. I tracked her to Menethil Harbour with a bunch of guildies. And I decided to stealth in. Since I was a low-level rogue and they were all very high-level, they could see me <laughs> immediately. 
I attack. Now remember, this is all being done in emotes, right? That's where you have to. I, this is the point. I can't get into roleplay. It just seems too ridiculous to me. It just seems too ridiculous. I can't do it. Anyway, here we go. This is all in emotes. <clears throat> I attack, trying to pounce on one guy, but since he already saw me, he avoids my attack. <clears throat> a druid goes into cat form <clears throat> and pounces at me. I dodge with a leap. <clears throat> Swipe her with my sword. But I miss. Some warrior decides to apprehend me. Stay still. The druid then uses entangling roots, but it's inside the building. I whisper him saying that's not how roots work, but he ignores me. With the rogue then going in to pump a needle into my arm. Hold still, boy. I struggle, of course. As I do not want my rogue to die to what was presumably poison. Then it got real. I said I was able to snap the bonds and everybody immediately stopped and the guild chat started to lose their minds because I was doing what they described as god emotes. And that's not allowed. I protested. Technically, I said, I haven't hit anybody. I haven't directed my emotes at anybody specifically. And I still was just trying to get some wiggle room to continue this fight. Well, after this, after this, they got real. The rogue with the needle. He decided to summon, and I quote, ultra death rays. Yeah. Yeah. Ultra death rays. And shot them at me. The druid decided to strangle me with her vines. And you'll never guess what the warrior did. And I quote, Warrior lifts me up and breaks my back. Parentheses, Bane style. That's after the ultra death rays. That's after the ultra death rays. Right? After the ultra death rays. Oh, big RP going on in Menethil Harbor. Big RP. Big RP. (sighs) So all of that I reacted with, guys, you're being a bit silly. (laughs) Hey, hey, guys, this is getting silly. Ultra death rays, Bane style. (laughs) To which the guild leader, Holly, shouts up saying, We're being silly? We're being silly. You're attacking a bunch of high-level players and think you can beat us all? That's when I realized these role players were taking character levels into account as to how strong they are. So in their logic, a farmer peasant at level 80 would be more powerful than a level 40 knight. And this was it, fellas. I decided to just leave them at that point. This guild wasn't for me. Come on a chest wasn't worth my time. And honestly, I wanted to go and grind some levels. The sad truth is, eventually I deleted that rogue, and I moved to Horde. But nothing really dramatic ever happened there. And there you go. The story of RP gone wrong. You too could be a victim, ladies and gentlemen. You too could be a victim of when RP goes wrong. So bear that in mind as you go forward. Let's have... This is going to be tricky for you. This this is going to be a journey. This is going to be tough. You're going to get... I'm sorry. I'm just letting you know. Right. Uh, we need a female GM, which will be Holly. And a male GM, who can be... Tontus. Tontus. Tontus from our wonderful Patreons. Uh, we need two Raider friends. So we'll have Vincent and Breakthrough. cesspool guild time oh he suspects he suspects i need two guild names actually two guild names if you could uh and three raiders who are only slightly mentioned they're only very rarely mentioned uh so we'll put uh let's put google in let's just put these in from the chat because they're only briefly mentioned google rem And Jack. Perfect. Can't spell Jack. Don't shout at me. It's because you're Welsh. Are we off the page? 
Here we are a little bit. Mm. It's kind of annoying. If we get rid of the width, maybe. Yeah. Ah, perfect. That works really nicely. Uh, back tits. All right. Fine. Back tits. <sighs> And death bane race. <laughs> yeah, death bane race works. All right, death bane race. I like it. Uh, dear Mr. Preacher, we have met IRL briefly at BlizzCon. Hello. I was a huge fan of your content, especially all the raid related and, of course, drama time. I thought I would share this episode of my WoW career with you and your lovely chat because it happens within the Quebec WoW community, to which you said you don't often get stories from them. I don't. It's a pretty close-knit, mostly because a lot of French Canadians like to raid in their first language. <laughs> the fucking French. Oh, no. No. <laughs> it's, uh, also this also creates a fertile environment for drama, as most of the veteran players know each other, either by raiding together at some point or knowing each other by name. These are the names you'll want. <sighs> Uh, oh, we actually need a third guild name. Um, <coughs> Mon Dieu. Mon Dieu will do. Sacre bleu. Sacre bleu. Sacre bleu. Mon Dieu will do. Okay. <laughs> They're not having the tiny hippos. Shop. All right. This is the story about a guild I joined back in Warlords of Draenor a couple of weeks before the release of Hellfire Citadel. I raided on and off semi-hardcore since Cataclysm, but I had gotten tired of the bickering that came with those groups and decided that I want a fun, casual, relaxed guild for a while. Again, I stress the point. Fun, relaxing, and casual has nothing to do with progress, okay? It doesn't. It doesn't, okay? It's about time efficiency. It's fine. I posted a message in the Wow Quebec Facebook group, and before your chat says something, it's a thing with over 4,000 members in it. I got recruited <laughs> to this newly formed guild. Mon Dieu. The guild was founded, and this is their mission statement, on the principles of respect and mutual help. It was one of the first things they advertised in their recruitment messages. Again, I stress, if a guild is advertising some sort of drama-free environment, it's going to be a bad time, okay? I would encourage you to look at any top raiding guilds thing and note that none of them mention no drama because... It's dumb as fuck to mention no drama. <laughs> it's so dumb. Uh, okay. <clears throat> this message incited me to join. Because who doesn't want a guild in which players respect and help each other, right? It's what we all want. Little did I know at the time that behind those words, almost, almost always, is a lie. The most drama-riddled, draining, and painful leaderships. Correct. Correct. The guild was led by a couple. Oh my god. <sighs> there they are. There they are. <clears throat> there they are. <laughs> They're walking on by, man. They're walking on by. I'm just saying. Keep your peepers open. There they are. <clears throat> now, I had not watched Drama Time at this point, so I did not see it as a red flag. But Holly and Tontus had a core of players who knew each other IRL, and they seemed very, very nice. As soon as I joined, I was warmly welcomed and invited to chat with them on TeamSpeak. I was not initially from their server, and I couldn't bring my hunter main to their group because they already had so many hunters. And so the GM couple helped me to level a new character, a Boomkin. They sent me gold and bags, so we kept getting to know each other in the meantime. At first, the guild had one raid team. The progress wasn't good, but I didn't care. My raiders were a blast to be around, so much fun. And it was mostly young parents who just wanted to kick back after the kids had gone to bed, play some games, lots of banters, inside jokes, 
and I immediately felt like it would be a great place to settle. And so, to Hellfire Citadel, we go together. As the new tier started, new loot was to be distributed. The loot council was made up of the two GMs and one officer. At one point, I did notice that loot distribution was kind of arbitrary. Because the guild rule was that the GM's votes count for two. And so the third member of the council could always just be outvoted. I thought it was weird. (laughs) Sure, but I was fine with it. Since there didn't seem to be a problem that I noticed. So it's fine. Our guild was very social. New members were invited every day to join the raid team. Good sign, right? And a lot of them stayed for the banter and activity of the guild. And then you know what happened after that? Those raiders' friends joined as well. And pretty soon, Mon Dieu had reached a couple of hundred members. And new, fresh raid teams were starting to form. What a sight. I want to clarify something that your chat might not agree with. Huge guilds with several teams are pretty normal in the Quebec community. And that means that they're not all cesspool guilds. So you should reserve your judgment. Because... (laughs) typically those guilds have at least one decent mythic team in them and they tend to survive longer because of all the people they can recruit right irl events were also common because most players could drive to the other main cities in the province within three hours and the first meeting i went to was at an aquarium parents brought their kids I ain't going to that. I've got kids and I ain't going to that. You what? <laughs> you out of your mind? I ain't going to that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> we had a really good time looking at the fish and hanging out with them. Needless to say, I was hooked. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. During the summer, one of the officers, the one who was the third loot council member, the useless one, invited us all to his home to have some drinks, hang out by his out- outdoor fire. Again, we told stories, we played games and messed around until the late hours, and we all went home feeling great. What a close-knit team. However, as we were getting closer to Mythic progression, people started to have a problem with the Loot Council. They were definitely starting to favour certain people. The third Loot Council member really did not agree with a lot of their choices, loot-related or even raid-related. Eventually, in front of everybody, Holly told him that he should remember that his opinion didn't matter anyways, because he only has one vote versus their four. (laughs) This led to our third council member taking a break from the group (laughs) and not too long after this particular player got invited to raid with another guild for one night as they were missing a raider within the next few hours all of his achievements for the first few mythic bosses had popped up under our guild's eyes and i can tell you this everyone in our team congratulated him we're happy for his boss kills as we were all such great friends who had met each other IRL and we wanted the best for each other. I would really like to tell you that's how it went down, but it did not go down that way. No, it did not. It was a fucking shit show. An absolute shit show. Holly, of course, went straight to the betrayer. Told him he wasn't being supportive of our group, even though he was on a break. He should be removed from the guild right away, no matter how many times we had met IRL. I was on TeamSpeak and told Holly, Holly, chill. I know you feel that way right now, but he was on a break officially. And plus, he's a friend. Let's let the dust settle a little bit. You did call him completely useless. I logged in the next day. He had already been kicked. More people were joining our raid group. 
But then two of them revealed themselves to be something strange. Good players. No, exceptional players. Breakthrough, a holy paladin, started destroying the healing meters as soon as he joined. Now, it should be noted that Holly and Tauntus were both healers. This made them look really, really bad. Vincent, a DPS warrior, was also doing pretty high numbers despite his gear being shit as he'd re-rolled. Their presence created an obvious contrast with some of the original members as to just how bad they were. Now, these players had come to relax. They were cool with the situation. They wanted the fun atmosphere and the casual approach. They were good. They were themselves, always playful and loud, making inappropriate jokes. This is really strange. Listen to this. They made inappropriate jokes that I only allowed myself to laugh at because I was at home with the curtains closed. Now, what the fuck does that mean? I genuinely mean that. This is for me. What does that mean? That's so weird. Wait, wait, wait. Is it more interesting? It's more interesting than that. Despite being quiet, serious, and a politically correct person, I was always good in public. But they always made me laugh. And so they became the most entertaining part of my nights on WoW, along with the others from Team 1. So what I'm getting from this... No, what I'm getting from this... Is if someone makes an inappropriate joke, right? Something to do with maybe a giant pulsing cock, a racist joke, something like that that happens in guild chats every now and again. You piss yourself because you really think it's funny. But if that was to happen IRL, you would go, that is shameful, sir. Shameful. 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 That's what I'm getting from that. That's what I'm getting. Sad. Yes. Yeah, at home you're going. <laughs> and then you'd laugh on your way home. <laughs> you'd laugh on your way home. <laughs> In the meantime, let's take it down a bit. I had received some bad news. My mum had pa developed pancreatic cancer. Our sorries go out to you. And was going to die. I kept playing Mao as wow as much as I could to get my mind off it. It was my distraction, and all my guildies were really supportive, and somehow, after spending time with them, I was a bit more cheerful. I did stop raiding, though, especially because I had classes to finish, but I always stayed very active within the guild, and when school finished, I was almost always at home, logged in to the game. Now, these GMs, they were young parents with full-time jobs, so I ended up doing a little bit of work for them during the day. I would do the recruitment posts, promotions, make contacts between raid leaders, interested raiders, etc. And it wasn't long before I was promoted to officer. <sighs> Along with my previously mentioned tasks, I got more involved in the guild politics. I made it a priority to nip any drama in the bud before they finished work so they would have it nice and easy when they logged on to play the game. I even typed out reports when I thought it was relevant. And as time went by, Augers called me a dick today. So I kicked him. What a douche. Sent. Easy. Easy. I know. Reports. Imagine coming home and reading the reports of the day. I'm going to send a report to Loz and to Alex. I'm going to do that. Clog, you should do it too. <laughs> Anybody who's here from my guild, we should make we should make reports for Loz. He is HR. It is actually known in our guild that Loz of Fat Boss Fame is, of course, HR for our guild. He's human resources. Should you have any concerns, please raise them with Loz. And he will deal with it accordingly. As time went by, I had formed a strong relationship with these GMs. And now I realize something terrible happened. Loyalty began to cloud my judgment. You see, Holly had developed a certain modus operandi. She would get into personal fights with players who disagreed with her or her boyfriend on guild or raid politics. Any disagreement was automatically shamed and shut down. And sometimes it got so bad that if they disagreed with what we were doing, they would be banned from the guild, banned from TeamSpeak. And not only that, even worse than that, they would be banned from Mondia's Facebook group. 
Almost all of the fights that happened in our guild were about people questioning their decisions. Once it was brought up with all the new players. Once, oh, example, once it was brought up with all the new players. We should think about recruiting officers outside of team one. So that teams two and team three can have some representation. We were told no. And it was made clear that in order to gain an officer role within inside Mon Dieu, loyalty, loyalty was the primary role. Not merits or skills or what team you belong to. Loyalty. Then, someone brought up the idea that we have so many teams now, it would be nice if each of the teams could name themselves. Absolutely not. Under any condition is that allowed. It is of utmost importance to the guild that the team names remain as Team 1, Team 2, and Team 3, and so on. Their explanation was that they didn't want to appear to be copying another guild who had done something like that. Of course, it was just about control. And making sure, most importantly, that players naturally understood that the goal was always Team 1. Their team rather than any of the other teams in the guild. The GMs were also involved in every single team's loot system. I don't remember if the teams had to specifically use our to loot system, or if they had to approve of each item that was being distributed. Either way, they had to make sure that all loot systems respected the philosophies as laid forth by Holly and Tauntus even though they had no other dealings with those raids at all. Talking about loot, there was once an argument over a piece of loot that took epic proportions. Holly and the raider involved fought and insulted each other all night, and after they had logged off WoW, they then continued to argue on Facebook. <laughs> I'm pretty sure at that point... In the public? In Facebook? Unbelievable. We're pretty sure at this point it wasn't about the loot, but that that player just being tired of her shit and pushing her every way he could. He was kicked and banned from all guild-related stuff, and the GMs made sure to let everyone know that he was not one of us. Another guy... <laughs> another guy suffered the fate of the banning because he called Holly a cake eater. <laughs> You're out! You're out! <laughs> I mean, that was something you were laughing at while the curtains are closed. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Giving it that. Another particular thing about this guild <clears throat> is that if you were in trouble, it was never a one-on-one -on -one situation. Instead, you had to be summoned to speak in front of what they called it, the council. It comprised usually of four or five people from the leadership team. And the GMs told me that the reason they used the council every time that there was a problem was so that the officers could feel involved and give their opinions on the situations. To me, it looked intimidating to see people dragged before the council. <laughs> hey, don't you guys end, end up in front of the council. That could be bad. I rarely got to hear the whole story, so I justified it all to myself, you know? Holly is just invested in the guild. She wants to protect it. She wants to do what's best for everyone else. Tauntus is supportive of his girlfriend and her decisions. He sometimes comes through as the more reasonable one. It was weird, though, to witness all these crazy fights while we were still advertising about mutual respect and help. Anyways, I would give my advice, what I consider rational advice in the situation. But frankly, now I write this, I don't remember a single time my suggestions or advice was ever actually used. <laughs> we did keep having a lot of fun, though. We've got to remember that. We're having a lot of fun as we stayed in line with whatever they... As, <laughs> this is a horrible line. We did keep having a lot of fun as long as we all stayed in line with what they wanted. <laughs> I'm just going to copy and paste this. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, as I'm writing this, I notice it sounds like I'm describing a cult, lol. Uh, mm, not a cult, particularly. Just somebody under some under you very domineering. <laughs> Happiness is mandatory, indeed. Now, during the holidays, we pooled our gold and our skills to wrap dozens of presents with collectibles. Aw, including one or two expensive mounts. And we organized an in-game hide-and-seek. While hiding, I got to chat with some of my lesser-known guildies, give them presents. So it was a very wholesome time for everybody who was in Mondia. My mom passed away in January. And during that time, it became obvious that a fourth team would need to form because a lot of players within the guild wanted a spot and there was no room in the other three. I put myself forward, team. <laughs> I offered the GMs to create and lead this group. I will lead team four. It would give me something to commit to while I was grieving. Instead, I got a proposal from the GMs. A counter offer. And the raid leader from team two. Choose the team four. We're going to merge them with team two to make one big heroic group. Team 2 was 6 out of 13-ish in heroic Hellfire Citadel. I happily obliged, and I took over the lead of Team 2. This, as I was told, was in the guild's best interest. Now picture all the Team 2 stereotypes you can think of. We haven't got a button for that, Chris. <laughs> I think we've got this one. <laughs> we've got that guy. <laughs> Christ! <laughs> Red alert. That was our group. <laughs> that was our group. I really wanted the group to stabilize. I wanted that group to get ahead of the curve. So I decided to create a couple of incentives for my newly newly formed group of miscreants. Like, I would buy an expensive mount for whoever had the best attendance during the first weeks. <laughs> it kind of worked. <laughs> it kind of worked. I tried to teach Team 2 like I was teaching them. Like a school of raiding. I started teaching individuals who couldn't do it how to keybind. I started teaching people where they could look for information about how to play their character. She tr hey, she's trying. She's trying her hardest. She's trying her best. She's doing what she can do. She's going full mother hen. I also had contact with some talented players who would come and help the group occasionally. Two of these dudes, Google and Rem, were from the previously mentioned famous guild, Baktits. Their group, Baktits, had done cutting edge already and didn't have that much to do during the week anymore. So they came with Team 2 to have some fun, share the bants, and chew up some bosses. As Team 2 had some of the most entertaining runs, especially when Jack and the other boys also joined. So it just became like a carry run where they had these funny dudes, kicking ass, taking names, guaranteed win. Now, Team 2 started to attract more and more good players. And she does say, maybe the fact that I'm a girl had something to do with everyone's interest for Team 2. But I would like to point out to your chat, I cannot confirm that this was the case. Alright, maybe, but she cannot confirm it. But what she can say is that really, really quickly after she took over, Team 2 got ahead of the curve. So, it's, it's a, it could be a mix of things. It doesn't have to be one or the other. It could be a little bit of the teaching, a little bit of keybinding, learning how to play, a little bit of big girl and bringing in some really good players it could have been that as well it could have been that as well the question is how many requests did you get for post raid chats that would be the defining factor there who tried to make a play outside of the raid we have another irl event in which we reserved a table at a buffet and went bowling about 12 to 15 of us we laughed at the quizzical looks people gave to the boards with our in-game names on it the next day was my mom's funeral, and I had invited the GMs. That seems weird. That seems weird. Isn't it? How close were you? Did they know your mum? Yeah. That seems a bit odd. But they didn't they couldn't come because they didn't have a babysitter and it was far from their home. Yeah. 
This is just to give you an idea of how close we were. Okay. So she's saying that it was appropriate. They were that close. They were that close. Who knows? We're guessing, right? Who do we know? We're spectators looking in at this two lines of text. Uh, but they, she says they were that close to the point they would be invited to a funeral. I'm not inviting any of you to my funeral. No. Maybe, maybe lame one can come. <laughs> maybe lame one can come. What the fuck? <laughs> Shay, lame one can come. <laughs> Rude. We'll stream it. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> We're good people. Dude, I'm gonna do a speech. <laughs> I've already written your funeral speech, Mike. That is it. That is it. <laughs> yeah, everyone will start the advice. No doubt everybody will be going. The rest of my time with Team 1 was horrible. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, I've missed a paragraph. As the expansion was starting to end, the numbers and the motivation were dwindling. And soon... T what? Hellfire Citadel? Unreal. Really? Crazy. Can't imagine. As the, uh, the numbers were dwindling, and soon Team 1 was having trouble putting together their mythic team. Can we talk? It's the GMs. How do you feel about us taking all your good players? <sighs> I mean, that's the situation, isn't it? They come knocking. Hi. Hi. <laughs> We'll call it a merge, a merge with both teams. Now, I admit, I was missing Mythic Raiding a little. And the moment seemed right as both groups did need more players. So I said, sure, I mean, we're all in the same guild. And I said, if this is what you want, let's make it happen. And the rest of my time in the new Team 1 was bad. They were so fucking bad. One of the raiders with mythic HFC experience tried to help the GMs once with the strategies, as we were clearly doing it wrong. He was banned <laughs> for questioning the guild politics. The boys and I were getting discouraged because poor performance was not being addressed. If that player was close or original team one, he was to be considered prized. A golden boy. Original Team 1 means a little something around here, I'll have you know. It doesn't matter that my logs aren't even grey, they're opaque. Because I'm Original Team 1. That's right. Constructive criticism was taken as an attack and could end up with you being summoned before the council. I saw the group was running in circles with bad people, bad strategy, bad energy. The plan was to make... New plan. New plan. No, no, no. New plan. New plan. New plan. We got this. Relax. New plan. We're obviously crap. So, new plan. Our new plan is to make Team 1 better for the next expansion. So, all these players who are not good, we'll give them experience now so that next expansion, they'll be tip top. <clears throat> we will add leadership, people. We will look who wants to step up. And we now intend to go more hardcore than ever next expansion. We're going to turn our casual doing a bit of mythic raid team into the raid team that's going to do 9 to 12 hours a week kind of group. So, <laughs> so just to check in with how good the leadership is of our husband wife guild. We're so bad we can't do any mythic progress. So will become a more hardcore, harder progressing guild off the back of that team. Sounds good. I like it. <sighs> now, potentially it could be good. I knew that with some practice, you know, Mondia could get better next expansion. It would be a lot of effort, especially in retaining the good players who clearly didn't need any of this help and motivating the people who clearly couldn't be bothered and just wanted to do heroic. But I knew I could never change this GM team's philosophy of providing immunity to officers and themselves. And that their involvement in raid leadership might get in the way of what we're trying to do. Not to mention, no one's kids or other obligations were going to disappear just because Legion was coming out. It's in this context that an idea grew in my mind. Planted its little seed in there. I was worn out. I yearned for good progression. <laughs> in a group that had the same levels of motivation and dedication as I did. 
by that point, I was getting along very, very well with some of the Raiders from Bactits. Mm. They were the they were the two players that had helped my team too. But I also was in contact with their raid leader, who sometimes mentored me on certain aspects of raid leadership. One of their officers was also keen on helping out other Quebec-based raiding teams. He came to a few of our pug runs and ended up sticking around to chill with us on TeamSpeak occasionally. I also knew Bactits had a pretty good raiding atmosphere, at least while they were on farm. On the other hand, though, I had friends in Mondia. I talked to them every day. Some on the leadership side, some not. My guildies' love and support had a huge impact on my mental health back then. I'm still thankful for that, even after everything that's about to happen. I felt like I owed it to them to give this new Legion A team A plus squad a chance. Should she have? <laughs> she knew. You know, within three lines. Oh, no, like maybe six lines. Six lines, you've gone. This will never change. And I know that to I should give them a chance. <laughs> six lines is all it took. It's all it took from never change to give it a chance. <sighs> At this point. The expansion was not coming out for two to three months. So I figured I would wait before making an official decision. She went to the GMs first. This is the strat we're taking. I go to them and tell them, I'm kind of interested in raiding with Bactits and not you. I'm going to make an application there. I told them I just wanted to let them know for transparency but I had not yet decided that I wanted some time to keep thinking about it. All right, that's too transparent, all right? That's too transparent. If you haven't even decided you're going to leave, you don't tell. It's too early, all right? <laughs> you don't tell someone, might leave, might not. Haven't decided, just letting you know. Just letting you know. Just throwing it out there, just letting you know. And a couple of weeks went by, the debate was still going on in my mind. I keep participating in discussions concerning Team One's Legion Uber Super Core and doing some work for them, as I still really wanted them to succeed, regardless of if I stay or not. And then one day, there's another knock at the door. It's someone from Bactits comes to me. He says this to me. It would be better if you made your application now than if you didn't gonna leave that with you but i'm telling you it would be better if you did that right now <laughs> in other words we have replacements for you if you want to join you kind of need to do it now just saying we're not, we're not fucking about if you want to join you need to do it now otherwise we're just gonna replace you no not a dick not a dick not a dick that is somebody letting you know if you we want you here we do we want you here but there are other people coming now. The X expansion's coming. Just letting you know, our, our recruitment pile is filling up with people ready to move. Not being a dick. Just letting you know, if you do want to join, you need to do it now. All right. <clears throat> so I did. <laughs> I filled out my application. I figured if I ended up staying in my current guild, they were not going to cry. As one of the best raid teams in our community, they would have dozens of applicants to choose from. Yes, they do. That's why they came to contact you. Look, yeah, you need to come now or it's not going to happen. At this point, I need to mention a little detail. The application form was fairly standard and asked for previous raiding experience with guild names and progression. One of my previous guilds was called Tiny Hippos back in Cataclysm. And so I wrote it in my application and published the whole thing on the forums. Oh. <laughs> okay, I see. Uh, one of her previous guilds was called Front Tits. And I posted that on the application. And then one of the officers replied, you were always a tits. So the names were similar. There you go. My application was approved and I was given a trial immediately. Very shortly after I was just approved... Tauntus messages me on the good book. I have the pictures of the chat. It has been translated for me because it is in French. <clears throat> hey, so you decided to go forward with your application to uh, Bactits? Yes. I wanted to wait until last minute to file it, but I was told the raid wanted to have it now. 
<laughs> I'm not doing the accent. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> I'm not doing it. <clears throat> Townsend says, I understand. And if they accept you or not. Uh, and I say, or not. <laughs> Lol. So which town says, I understand. There's not much chance of them turning you down. I want to be honest with you. I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. I can't figure out what you want. I have the impression that you just don't want to raid with our team anymore. But you don't want to admit it because you're an officer and all. And you want to keep the door open for yourself. <laughs> also, you talk a lot about back tits. I guess I'm insecure, lol. But I'm also a man of principle, you know? And I don't see how my girlfriend Holly can count on you in the next expansion, knowing fully that you are looking to go with someone else. Uh, the S, sideways S emote. Because if you're telling me, yes, I want to raid with you, and all, and we're looking for people to raid, but you're looking to join another guild at the same time, I admit I worry about this. So our author says, well, in a way, <laughs> this is the most passive aggressive way of saying bye ever. This is, in a way, you can't count on me for the next expansion. In a way. Alright? Because my presence is not guaranteed. It's not 100% guaranteed. So, in a way, you're right because you can't count on me. <laughs> because I'm not going to be there. In a way. Alright? In a way. <laughs> so, she says, well, just yesterday... You were talking, you were talking with a friend about gold capping and how you wanted to get as much gold as possible to buy all the BOEs because other gold capped players might get your spot otherwise. Oh my God. Imagine getting a raid spot because of BOE. <laughs> Corruption. <laughs> Our author says, I'm going to know if I get a spot only a month after the raid comes out. So I assume that your group will already be complete if I'm there or not. The mythic dungeon groups will also be set, so I'll have to get gear by myself. And that is okay, because I take responsibility for this application I have filed. But what you want to know is, do I just not want to raid with you? That's what you're asking. Are you asking me you just don't want me to raid with you? No, that's not what I'm asking. I'm trying to understand because you're sending me mixed signals. You know that as much as I do, I think. Look, Tauntus, I didn't look for a hundred different groups. Their leader came to me. If you're not taking in the group, that's okay, because there's a lot of other good groups in Bactits. But I hold it, told him no. It's the main Bactits team, or it's Mondia. You did say that. And it's that order, though, isn't it? Back tits first, Mondia second. I am sending mixed signals. I don't know what I want. Do I want back tits? Do I want Mondia? I don't know what I want. <laughs> Tell just comes back, okay. I'm not mad, but I'm curious. And since you don't know what you want, I'm trying to clarify. For Holly, too. We're wondering and we don't want to get our hopes up. I mean that. If you want to move, you have the right to do so, officer or not. You're paying for your wow. In a way, <laughs> I think it would be best, this is what our author says, I think it would be best if you don't consider me in your Legion setup. In a way, all right? Try that. Try that. Try making a Legion setup where I'm not there. <laughs> Try that. <clears throat> so it starts to say, yeah, that's also what I think. I know you say you don't know what you want, but I think you do know what you want. And I'm saying that's okay too. Our author. 
I keep changing my mind. One week I'm thinking one side, the next week the other. But the important part is that you have a solid group. And if I were you, I wouldn't take me. <laughs> because I don't want to say I'm going to be there when I might not be there. Because I might not be there. But I might be there, but I might not be. So Toads just comes back again. <laughs> Uh, okay, that was already clear. From what I understood yesterday, you're telling Holly that we're the priority. And if it didn't work, and at the end of the August, you would go to back tits. Now, our authors put in brackets. That would make no sense. I needed to trial for back tits before Mythic Emerald Nightmare was out. And so there would be no way for me to know if Team 1 was working out at the same time. Okay, so that's definitely confused. She wasn't going to plan to raid with both. But now you've been told to apply right away, we should no longer consider you at all. Though I might have understood. <laughs> That's how I see it. The other day I said, or maybe I meant to say, that my decision is... No how are you guys having this conversation? What is wrong with you? Oh, can you imagine being a GM and not just going, just leave. For the love of God, just leave. Please, bye. You're gone. Let me make it easy for you. You're kicked. How's that? Fixed. Tick of the box. Okay. She says, that's not how I see it. The other day I said, or maybe I meant to say, that my decision is a maybe. <laughs> but I don't want to help you build your semi-hardcore group. I know I won't make a big difference, but even if I don't raid with you, I can talk about raiding with you. Recruit for you and keep the hype up. Put the guild on the map, increase its visibility, or whatever else I could do to be useful, and try to retain players. To which sounds us. I don't think Holly got it that way. We thought you wanted to be a part of the team. And now it's clear you should talk to Holly again. Okay. I really don't want to send mixed signals. It wasn't my intention. I can understand that it might have looked like I was playing both sides, but it's really just that I don't know. I'm glad you talked to me about this. Townsend says, I figured it wasn't your intention. I'm glad we talked. All right. So we've cleared the air. No, everybody's clear, right? Are we all clear? <laughs> Are we all clear? <laughs> it's all good. All right. <clears throat> Two days pass. Two days pass. It's raid night. We had not had any other conversations about the situation. The night had been pretty bad again. I went on Skype with my friends from Baptist, who were as discouraged as me, to let off some steam. The reason we were on Skype and not TeamSpeak because we wanted to hang out with the guild's latest exiled player, who no longer had access to anything guild-related. We talked about what went wrong that night, tried to cope with a little humor and a little bit of bants. One of the boys started roasting our team, affirming that clearly some of our players should consider signing up for LFR instead. His friend agreed, and of course, the exiled player encouraged them. For my part, I playfully said, all right, let's do it. And I typed, has left the guild in guild chat while on my ult. Now, I know what you guys are thinking, but it's a recurring thing I used to do to feign a rage quit. Just to be funny. The timing of a joke is important. It is. <laughs> it really, really is. Context is important. The timing is important. You can't just drop it in. <clears throat> now, luckily, no one actually left the guild that night. And we all went to bed. The next morning, though, oh, oh, I was getting ready for a driving class when I saw the GMs message me via Facebook again. How much business is conducted on Facebook? Again, it's translated, but I didn't change or remove anything of what was said. I did add some present day commentary, though, on reflection. <clears throat> Touters, who is this guy? Someone has brought this up to me. I said, uh, it's a friend of mine in the same face, same Facebook group. Why is that group, Backtits, you are joining, checking out our Twitch channel? Oh, they started watching the stream. Oh, no. 
Oh, nightmare. They're watching the stream and making jokes on the place. <sighs> what? Oh, no. <laughs> nightmare. I don't know, she says. <laughs> I don't know. Lock it down, boys. This is red alert time. You've been outed. You've been absolutely outed. You're watching the Twitch stream and one of the more bants heavy guys have put in comment. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Oh. I can't say why they're watching the stream. Tautus, this is starting to feel wrong. All these players, Google, Rem, and Jack. Hmm? It's, dinner it's dinner time. I'll be done in two minutes, okay? You close the door, though, because I need to do some shouting. You can sit next to me at dinner, yeah. <clears throat> You're the one who's bringing these friends to us. So you must know why they're watching our Twitch. And then Holly kicks in. It's not that hard. It's either one of two things, isn't it? Either they're looking for potential prospects from our raid. Or to see their new tryouts. Or to mock us. No offense, but it's one or the other, isn't it? In both cases, it has one person in common. You. Why are they here? I think we should talk. Now, I say, like I said, I can't say what's happening. They asked me about the raid, how the raid was going, because it was open to giving advice. He loved to see other Quebec roots thrive. He was curious, so I linked him our Twitch. You know? Right. Right. Huh. We don't understand you anymore unhappy face if one of them came back on team speak lately i wasn't aware oh they joined their team speak <laughs> if one of them came on team speak i wasn't aware <laughs> i hadn't spoke to them for ages <laughs> this <time> I joined team speak. <laughs> yeah they were there this morning yep he was here this morning anyways can you sort it out with them as to what they're doing that's what she said they came in our team speak the first time. Uh, one of them said, I don't want to cause trouble. I just want to have fun and make new friends. So did he really have that in mind or was it something else? I have no idea. That afternoon was really fun. So maybe he wanted to stick around because he enjoyed being around our players. There's never anyone relaxing on Backtits' team speak server. So what is it you want? That they don't come to our team speak anymore? I don't mind. I'll let them know. I just don't want to, to which our GMs reply, Holly, I just don't, I just don't want to have the impression that they're here to steal our players. Back tits has never been around or as close to our guild as they are right now. We're not even that good. So why are they here? I just think it's largely imper 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 interpretive to say I'm bringing them with me. I'm not the one who's doing this. Anyways, I'm not doing it intentionally, though maybe indirectly because we talked after I applied and they might have been curious. Of course it's to do with you. Why else would they be there? Why else would they be there? It's 100% you. Of course it is. Are you crazy? It's totally you. <clears throat> Google and Rem were helping you in team two. And for what I read in your application, you were always a back tits. That's only because I was in a guild that had the same similar name to Bactis. You said you weren't the one bringing them here. Look, ask the other guild if he's on the prowl for players. I don't think he is. Let's be honest. Your ditching goes for Bactis. We're pissed at you for it. And since then, they're always around us. And that's the problem. You've brought them to us to show yourself off. I don't get what you want from me. I don't know. I just want you to be honest. No. Not now. No, I'm not doing this. All right. You applied without ever knowing what we're capable of in Legion. Our team is going to be the best. Because in your head, it was clear that you were leaving. Leaving us. But you didn't even allude to that. So don't tell us we're misinterpreting. I was here during conversations that you had had. And you said you wanted to wait and see what we could do in Legion. And then you would decide. But now, now you're saying, no, no, no. That's not what I said. I'm not buying it. 
I'm sorry, I don't believe you. I think you're going back and forth because you don't want to be left without a group. And I don't think that's okay. Yesterday, you thought you were funny. My alt has left the guild. Please stop. Neither of us laughed. Did you ever think about that? Did you also think you were part of the equation and you led us to believe that you wanted to be part of it far more than just keeping up the hype? I'm not buying it. We've only been seeing back tits around since you started leading Team 2. I didn't mean it that way. And frankly, we would accept it better if we knew that you were being honest in your actions. And remember, in the first place, you wanted to be a Moonkin. They wanted, they, then you wanted a mage. Then you wanted to raid. Uh, then you didn't want to raid. Okay, she's put some commentary here. You wanted to be a Boomkin. Yes, that's why you recruited me. Then you wanted a mage. Yes, and her re-roll was approved. Then you didn't want to raid. Yes, because her mum was dying. Then you wanted to lead a team. Yes, because you needed someone and asked me to do it. <laughs> All right. Then you didn't want to lead a team anymore. Yes, because you asked me to merge team one and team two, which they did. Though I had to admit I was getting tired of heroic Archimon wipes on team two. Then you wanted something serious for Legion with us. And then you didn't. In short, I don't understand you. The my alt has left the guild thing. You weren't the target audience for that. It's because I was on Skype with the boys. I was just messing around to let off steam after a bad raid. Yeah, well, we were there. And you didn't think about that, did you? It wasn't funny at all to us because we know what's happening in Legion for real. And I'm really curious to see in which context that joke was made on Skype. Think about that too. We're human beings with emotions. <laughs> and now it looks like you're screwing with us. I'm tired of picking up my girlfriend who feels so defeated because of all of this. And you're only thinking about your little Legion kills with your elitist friends. We didn't think you were like that. And we're disappointed in you. She says, that gaslighting bastard, he succeeded at making me feel like shit for something I didn't do. Elitist, they raid Mythic. That's elitist. That's elitist. That's elitist. <laughs> me, I'm very sorry. I knew there was a cold between us. I didn't think it was this bad. You're right, though. In that situation, maybe that joke was not appropriate. Now, she's put here, wrong move, a bot. <laughs> A bot, a bot. We expected this from the guy we kicked last night. From those stupid back tits people, but not from you. It's so stupid and we're sad. Well, I'm sad too, she says. You are now because I'm saying this to you. But you weren't before. If we refer to your joke from yesterday, it's all fun and games. In what context did you think we would laugh at you leaving the guild? Considering you are ditching us in Legion. You're right. I told you what was on my mind. Sorry it doesn't please you, but I'm not a hypocrite, and this is how my honesty comes out. I don't even want to know in which context you would want to leave the guild. Isn't that funny? <laughs> At this point, your two friends are really discour discouraged from helping us raid, so it must be in that context. You're an officer of this guild, of Mon Dieu. Why do you even have that title if you're leaving? You should remember that. People like you, seriously. I don't even understand. When you'll be done playing with WoW, what is going to be left of your boss kills? But anyways, that's just me. I play for fun and make friends at the same time. I should have stayed out of this. Towns just left the Facebook conversation. And an officer pipes up after reading the whole thing. Well, I feel really awkward now. I was just seeing what was up with you lot. <laughs> Unhappy face. <laughs> <laughs> well this is awkward <laughs> he's just coming in like yo what's up guys <laughs> holly holly says so do i i am ashamed that this is happening and i say our author says seriously this whole thing have fucking hurt Holly says, why? We didn't ask for you to do this. You're the one who wanted to get involved. You're the one who said, I can't wait for Legion. We're going to have a good group. And I'm certainly not the one who told you to type, my alt has left the guild. The office, the other office is like, stop, stop. What are you doing? <sighs> Our author asks, what is it you actually want now? All right. What is it you want now? To be honest. She's done. All right, then. Well, just so you know, Mondeur is my home. It will always will be as long as the people in it will want to hang out with me. 
You were there when my mom got sick, when she died, and even during the grieving process, this guild has helped me tremendously. In my mind, spending 9 to 12 hours a week raiding with another group never changed that I would come back here and have fun with you guys. I have always done my best for the guild's interest as an officer. I would never have brought back tits here to steal players. And especially, even if things were bad in the past few days, I would never have left the guild because of a tough raid night. But you don't trust my faith. And what you said today is hurtful. So yes, maybe I shouldn't be an officer anymore. If you no longer trust me, it's pointless. And then the love comes through. We do love you. We love you as a friend. <laughs> She's written fuck off in brackets next to that. You were the last one I thought would be lolling in Skype about joking about leaving the guild. As saying that you will leave us. No matter what you say, for me, the context of that conversation was going the same way as that joke. And it hurts us. It means from one side you are with us. And on the other side you're laughing at us. And to make me believe that you're 100% with us. I don't know, but I have the impression that if I believe it, I'll be told again in a few months that I was misinterpreting things. You say you were hurt, so imagine how I feel having to meet with my officer to tell her I think she's going behind our back in what I interpret. The conversation ended as two officers had now joined the conversation and told us, we're just playing a game. <laughs> it's just a game. Can you guys chill the fuck out? And then... We're about as useful as green plants for the rest of the story. I know Mike and chat. I should have seen it coming a long time ago. I couldn't get away with it forever while others uh, were getting banned and blacklisted left and right. I packed up my cases and I left the guild. I finished the tier raiding with another Quebec guild that was very chill. Uh, an 11 or 12 out of 13. But they only raid twice a week and I was aiming for three days a week progression. Right. Now, I did tell you before we got into this that many of you would not know if anyone was at fault or not. Guilty. <laughs> Everybody's guilty. The problem is here, you can't tell people you're leaving if you're not sure you're leaving. You can't do that. If you're going to go and tell people you're leaving a guild. It's because you're leaving. Don't drag it out into some weeks and months long thing. Because it only looks bad on you. I'm not saying you did anything particularly wrong. You were trying to be good. I get it. You were trying to be nice. You were trying to be doing something nice and make everything good. But... Look at it from their point of view, right? I'm just, they're, they're pretty bad people as well for what you told us, right? I'm not dismissing them. I'm leaving. Now all my friends are hanging out here. They're definitely joking about how bad our players are. They're coming to the Twitch channel. It does nothing but look bad. It does nothing but look, look, look bad. They're not perfect, but you can't drag out a guild leave like this. If you're leaving, just say I'm stepping down. That's it. I'm done. And leave it there. Job's a good one. Otherwise, it turns into this. And as I said on Twitter, I'm pretty sure there are many people who listen to that who have probably witnessed this happen. And how this happens. Because I have witnessed this before as well. Where there's somebody who was leaving the guild and it seemed to go on for like a month. And then it got weird. And then it got even crazier because it escalated and escalated and escalated. And that person was back. And then we got again. Ugh, it turns into a massive drama. But there you go. Our tale. <sighs> Yes, my ch my family is waiting for me for dinner, but we still have to finish that out. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not us probably done for the weekend. There will probably be some stream over the weekend. I need to confirm with Emma. I haven't even had a chance to speak to her today because we've been streaming all day. But I'll let you know via Twitter what's happening or if I'm going to be working on YouTube stuff. So we will find out. Thank you all for a massive, massive week. Uh, we have done a huge week. So if you're interested in the other stuff we've done, go and check it out on the VODs. If not, I'm going to go and have some dinner with my family who is waiting for me at the dinner table. So there we go. Yes! Well, the kids go to bed around uh, 7.38ish, so dinner at 5pm is the time we roll with. Be good! I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Where's my end button? There it is.